today I'm going to teach you how to use the particle system in Blender and import it into Effect House so you can create effects like this. Open Blender, click General, right click and delete the default cube. So click Shift A to add a mesh and plane. Now you can see that we have a plane. From here, click on this icon and press the plus icon to create a particle system. Now, if you press start, you can see that a bunch of particles are coming out. But if we try to export it now and put it into Effect House, it does not work. So I'm going to reduce the number to 20 just so it's easier to keep track of. And under render, instead of rendering as halo, we are going to click it and click object. But now you can see that nothing is coming out. That's because we didn't select which object we want to be instantiating as. So I'm going to go back out here, click shift A, and under mesh, I'm going to add a cube. Click G and click Y so you move only along the Y axis. Click back on this plane and under instantiate, use this picker icon to click the cube. Now I'm going to increase the scale so that you can see better and now you can see that the cubes are falling out. You can alternatively also press this icon and select from this list as well. Before moving on, we want to give it some color, so I'm going to click on the cube icon, go all the way down here, and click new to give it some material. I'm going to change the base color to blue, but it doesn't reflect now because this is how we're viewing and we want to go to the very end. And now you can see that our color is reflected. Now, Effect House has a triangle limitation of 100K, so we want to make sure that it's under there. So what you should do is, next to this icon, there's a button called Statistics. If you click this, it shows you how many triangles an object has. So divide 100K by this number to see how many particles you can have. Now what you want to do is click on the object first and then click shift and click the emitter. It always has to be in this order. You can't click the emitter first and then the particle. Go to the scripting option. Press the add icon. Paste in the source code that I will link in the description. Press the arrow and you can see it takes a second if you have a lot of particles or really complicated animations, it's going to take longer. But it should come out something like this, which means instead of it being particles, we have now converted them into individual objects and baked the animation to correlate to each of the particles. So what you want to do is drag this out a little bit so you can see this icon. You're going to click here and click on the monitor. That's because if we turn off the plane, you can see nothing is happening. And it's because this monitor icon is not on. So what you want to do is click shift and click on this icon so all of it is deselected and click it on so that everything is selected. Now it's going to actually show in this space. What you want to do now is click on the very first particle system, go all the way down, Click shift and select your last one so that all of your particles are selected. Now we are going to go under file, export, FBX, and I am, select the folder that you want to export to. I am going to name this blue cube. Make sure to click this selected objects option and under bake animation, turn off LA strips and all actions. Open Effect House. Click Create Project. Now you are just going to get the FBX file that you have created. Drag it down here. Click Import. Wait for it to load and drag it up. Now you can see something is happening, but it's way too big. So I'm going to click on the scale icon and make it smaller. So this is how you import a particle system. Of course, afterwards you can move it up or down. And if you wanna change the color, click on the materials tab, 
you can go change it to be a different color you can add a texture you can change the opacity if you go back to the particle system there are so many things you can adjust like the number how fast it is how long it's going to stay alive if you click on rotation you are able to randomize the direction that it's coming from you can also click physics now it's newtonian which is the physics that we encounter in daily life but you can select something like voids and then it would be very floaty you can also adjust the scale to make it really big or really small if you select fluid all of the objects move in a fluid like behavior if you increase the damp it's going to slow down. Also, if you click Shift A, add mesh, another plane, click G and Z so that we move along the Z axis. Go over here, click collisions. Now, all of the particles will bounce off of this plate. And if we export this animation, it would also show this bouncing action. So you can use it to animate a ball, for example. So same process, click the icon, click the particle first, and then the emitter, go to scripting, and click the uh, arrow icon. Follow all of the previous steps and it should successfully render. But you don't always have to use boring objects like a cube. So this is a low poly 3D model of a frog that I found on Sketchfab. I'm going to download the 3D file in the GLTF format. I'm going to click file and under import, get GLTF, go to my frog folder, import my frog. I'm going to press R and then Z to rotate it on the Z axis. I'm going to click G and Y, drag it to the left so that you can actually see what's going on. We are going to go back to the plane and under particle systems, under the, under the render tab, I'm going to press X to deselect the cube and use the picker icon to select the frog to replace it with frogs. If you zoom in, now you can see that these are bouncy frogs, which is adorable. I am going to go and turn off the rotation so you guys can all see the frogs. This is absolutely adorable. This is actually giving me an inspiration for a filter. You might see a bouncing frog filter soon. Repeat the same process. I am going to select the frog and then I'm going to select the emitter, go to scripting, press the arrow, and wait for the particles to come out. Repeat the process, export it as an FBX. You can also export it as a GLTF. So now I'm going to import my jumping frogs. I'm going to go in here, click import. And now you can see the jumping frogs has been imported. I'm going to drag it up and look, they are jumping. Amazing. I'm going to drag it down to make it a little smaller. Perfect. This is adorable, but you can see that it's missing the texture. That's totally fine. That happens. What you want to do is go back to where you downloaded the original file from Sketchfab, go under textures, grab this base color, drag it in here go to materials click texture on and under this tab we're going to scroll down and click base color and now you can see all of the froggies have gotten their cute textures back so i'm going to delete this cube i'm going to click add object and under ar tracking i'm going to add a head tracker I am going to drag this jumping frog down to the head tracker so that it moves with the direction of my head. I am going to drag it up so it looks like they are bouncing from my head. 
Yay, amazing. So this is how you use the particle system. I hope this was helpful. I hope it inspires you to create many, many more fun projects. If you do use this idea, please be sure to credit whatever resource you're using, the person who came up with this code, and me. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you.